I assure you, brother, the sun will shine on us again. <laughs> Your optimism is misplaced, Asgardian. Well, for one thing, I'm not Asgardian. And for another, we have the heart. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. The sun will shine on us again, brother. And it's now confirmed because Variety just posted a report that Marvel is developing spin-off TV shows for Loki, Scarlet Witch, and the other Avengers level characters that have not gotten their own solo movies yet. So time to freak out, we gotta break this down. Because this is such awesome news, there's a new round of that Spider-Man PS4 giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. Important stuff first, right now they're naming Scarlet Witch and Loki as the first two characters and the way they're billing this is that it's going to be an anthology series of sorts like six to eight episodes of a TV series on their new Disney streaming service. Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen would be coming back to play their characters and it would just be a way to tell more story with characters like say the Hulk or Hawkeye, people that haven't gotten their own dedicated trilogy of movies like Thor is probably going to get a fourth movie at some point so he's getting plenty of movies, Iron Man got a trilogy, he's featured prominently in all the Avengers films, even Black Widow is getting her own film series but there are so many good characters that we've seen since phase one that haven't gotten that limelight so they're just using this as an opportunity to make up for that. The way Variety is reporting about the production of these series is that Disney's intending on spending buckets of money. So think about HBO spending say $10 million an episode on Game of Thrones or Westworld. Imagine Marvel doing something like that with a six to eight episode anthology series focusing on Loki, then focusing on Scarlet Witch, then focusing on other characters. They haven't said how many seasons they have the actors locked down for, like if Tom Hiddleston would only be around for the first season and it would be like a Loki Tales of Asgard situation, then they would go to Scarlet Witch set during a different time period and Loki would not be involved with that or if everybody's going to be crossing over. But this is the shared universe with the movies that people have been asking for for TV series, like Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. technically connected to the movies but very little crossover upstream downstream, like the movie characters don't appear on the TV shows. The TV characters don't appear in the movies. It sounds like Disney's using their new streaming service to correct that because you would literally have the movie actors playing their characters during the TV series. They didn't say exactly what the story would be. My assumption is, is that it's going to be set during a different time period because Loki is supposed to be dead as of the end of Infinity War, even though a different version of Loki is going to be featured during Avengers 4. Even though Scarlet Witch has been turned to ash, I believe she's coming back. I wouldn't be surprised if Vision showed up during her TV series, but that would also probably be set during a different time period, maybe sometime in between the movies. In terms of moving the story forward, I think Scarlet Witch is a better candidate for that because I think that they'll bring her back and I don't think that they're going to roll back Loki being dead. He'll be stuck in Valhalla and find some other way to come back. When characters like Loki and Thor have been alive for 1500 plus years, it's a lot easier to do something set in the past than it is for someone like Scarlet Witch who ages in normal time like the rest of us. I've always wanted them to do a Tales of Asgard series, say like Game of Thrones, Marvel's Game of Thrones, and it would be like Odin's Conquest of the Nine Realms. Like we got a teaser for that during Ragnarok. It was very bloody. Hela would be the protagonist of that. The violent appetites grew beyond my control. Couldn't stop it, so I imprisoned her, locked her away. She draws her strength from Asgard, and once she gets there, her powers will be limitless. Variety didn't report any specifics about other Thor characters showing up like Chris Hemsworth or Anthony Hopkins coming back as Odin or Cate Blanchett coming back as Hela. So I think that's all up in the air right now and it's going to be a little while before Disney says exactly what the story is going to be. But clearly they've been working on something like this since they wanted to launch their streaming service. So that is the killer programming that they need. Like you want that big Avengers content, you have to get our streaming service. So that would definitely make me sign up for that. People have been asking for a Hawkeye Netflix series ever since they launched the Netflix TV shows. Well, now they can actually do that. And for the most part, I think most of these characters will be coming back in Avengers 4. So most of these TV series can deal with what happens with the characters next. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it set in the future. It could always be set in the past. But I think part of the idea is, part of the beauty is, is that you can do a connected TV universe within this Disney streaming service. 
DC is kind of doing the same thing with their streaming service that they just launched. Like all the shows are connected, but they're not necessarily connected to all the other TV shows that are happening. Because Disney is pulling away from Netflix, I don't know what that means for the potential of Netflix characters crossing over to these Disney streaming shows like Loki or Scarlet Witch. But there's not a big connection between those characters, so I'm not expecting it. It'd be more likely that you'd have Coulson or somebody else show up. Somebody that has history with, say, Loki. But that just depends on when it's set during the timeline. You have to remember, too, that characters like Loki don't spend a lot of time on Earth in their 1,500-year history. He traveled all over the galaxy. So I think the beauty of a series like that is that you could do something set in outer space where he just hops around. But Mischief Managed, this is such an awesome news break. I would have never thought that they would have done something like this. You didn't see that coming? People have been asking Kevin Feige about movie actors popping up on TV shows for years now. And the last really telling answer that he gave is that he expected at some point there would be duplication. But what he meant by that is that he expected at some point there would be a TV show that would do a version of a movie character. Not necessarily that all the movie actors would come on the TV shows reprising their characters. But this just completely throws that out of the water. And he gave that answer before they announced the Disney streaming service. I think the executives at Disney realized that if they spent the right amount of money, had the right creative, and got the movie actors to come back, that would get people to pay for this new service. They haven't announced a pricing model or anything like that. That'll probably happen sometime next year. The service is supposed to launch at the end of 2019, so it's still a long ways off. They'll probably have more announcements about it at Comic-Con next year. But for those of you that have been wanting a Hulk movie for a long time, this is how they sidestep that distribution issue that they have with Universal. I want to just make one thing perfectly clear yeah, today. A standalone Hulk movie will never happen. <laughs> Tell me why. Because Universal has the rights to, st to the standalone Hulk movie, and for some reason, they don't know how to play well with Marvel. And, and they don't want to make money. And with you as the new Hulk, it would be terrible. That's, so that's really probably that's the reason. Probably. <laughs> like, people ask Mark Ruffalo, why don't you make a Hulk film? And he's like, well, Universal still has the distribution rights, and apparently they don't want to make any money because they didn't see reason the way that the Sony people did with the Spider-Man sharing arrangement. So when he says it's never going to happen, technically a movie with the Hulk might never happen, but a TV series now is totally doable. They do have the rights to do that. The other thing that we should say too is, is that just because a couple big characters might die during Avengers 4 and not come back in the movies, that also doesn't mean that they couldn't appear in any of these TV series. Because remember, don't know exactly when they're going to be set in the timeline. Not all of them might be set in the future. If you do something in the past, Chris Evans, who's on my death predictions list, could totally come back for something set in the past. But remember, the whole idea is, is that these are supposed to focus on characters that have not gotten a lot of big movies. So that's why they're starting with Loki and Scarlet Witch, because they're really popular characters, but they just haven't found the right mixture to give them their own solo movie. The funny thing about this is, is I've been getting a lot of requests from a couple people persistent that I do Scarlet Witch content. What do you think is going to happen to her? Well, now we know. She's going to get her own TV series. So just post all your reactions in the comments below. Let me know what you want them to do for the stories for these TV series. Ashton Jackson, congratulations. You're the giveaway winner from my last big video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here to rewatch the Captain Marvel trailer a billion more times and click here for my last big Loki video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.